Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here where we're going to have some more good outboard fun and who knows what else. But we are going to get back on this Johnny Rude 30 25 ish uh, true Johnny Rude in every sense of the word. I've got Evan Rude and Johnson Parts all through it. I'll punch some of them out as we go. But we've got to get the electric starter, a little bit of wiring. I still got the throttle connect right at the at the riser to do so we're going to get back on that stuff and get this thing wrapped up that's what we're going to do so i say let's get to it I'm going to put another spacer right there, I think. That's going to be the gist of it, though. I still, I can adjust it here and here. I got a few adjustments. But I'm going to come up through here. This is threaded right here. I'll come up through there, and then it's got an Allen head key, so I can get up under there and tighten it. Should work. There we go. Now it'll fit nice and snug. Okay. It will all fit in there. <laughs> um, and there it is. Okay, I finished up my uh, throttle there. Now, that works nice. It's all loosey goosey. And I like the way that came out. Um, the wiring and so forth, you can look at my past videos on hooking up electric start. It's the same process. I found nothing really different along the way. Um, Something about this model that's always kind of irked me a little bit is this right here. This guy. Um, just the way it shifts in and out, it's going to put pressure at a downward angle and pinch it. And I've always had trouble with those coming out. So I'm, I'm going to have to come up with some other kind of boot on that. Because that's useless there, what they got. Um, also, I put the starter button right there. And if you want to know why I did, it's because they already had a hole drilled here. They had one of those, like you, people sometimes use for a horn... They had one of those buttons, so I'll fill that right there 
actually probably what I'll do is drill them out a little bit bigger and then I've got these plastic caps you put a little glue on and pop in there probably do that there but uh, we've got her all hooked up as far as Johnny Rood components um, that power head is a Johnson the lower cow and mid leg is an Evan Rood the shift handle here came off a Evan Rood 55 commercial um, the lower unit is off a of Johnson I had an Evan Rude one but I went ahead and used the Johnson off of one that I that a friend brought me in here and it was already pretty clean and all so I went ahead with that one I'll save the Evan Rude for another the tiller handle Johnson the recoil start Evan Rude like I said power head Johnson um, so what you got here is a true Johnny Rude and uh, she's a good one I want you to look at my four cell rack got some pretty big holes in it yeah I've been moving some aluminum aluminum. Do you remember I did a 35 uh, Johnson here not too long ago? That sold. And then you remember that beautiful 2006 Bombardier made in Canada Johnson that was like really clean and I put the flywheel off an 89 I put the carburetor off an 89 because it was all aluminum and a charging rectifier and lightering coil and well the guy made me an offer I couldn't refuse but here's another one that hurt you remember I used to have two enduro 40 Yamahas The fella made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So, I'm down to one. So, this Johnny Rood I just built will be a welcome addition to the four cell rack. Because I'm getting a little bit thin. And the fish are still running. I've been doing some other things too, such as that and lawnmowers and pressure washers yuck but I've got to get on that little cutie right there that 5.0 that's my neighbor's engine and then I've got to get on that 15 Yamaha right there that one came in from a village so I gotta get going on them you stupid thing the pull start.
Okay, I got my power pack right there with the leads going to the app board. And then I've got a test light right there so I can check the uh, output, make sure she's sending a charge to my other glove on this Johnny Rude. Squeezy the bulb. I think we're hooked up there. Turn on the water. Okay. that much and here's these little plugs I was talking about they look like that and you just stick them in there I'll wipe off that excess I drilled these are 3 8 I drilled a 3 8 inch hole Out of there, the excess. A little overkill on the glue there. But I'll wash that off. Then I gotta put my that and I gotta come up with a washer behind that too, I think. I'll be right back. Okay, one more thing I wanted to do on this guy. You see this? All that crud, crud in there? Excuse me. Well, I took this guy off. You can see the cuts there, maybe. Some little cuts. What I had to do was take Diablo um, my die grinder and cut the head of the screws that were in that piece I first tried it with a Phillips bit and that didn't work um, so I cut then I took, after I made my cut with the die grinder, I could get in there with this, and then I took a hammer and used the impact screwdriver to get them out, because you can see, boy, there's a lot of salt. So you can see I made a cut with the die grinder, and then that let me get a nice big fat bit in there, like so, and then whack it with the impact and hammer and out she come so I want to I was getting some leakage all around here 
and after looking at this salt buildup, no wonder. So I'll get this all cleaned up and we'll get the new one on there. Alrighty, get the new gasket on there. Get us a new gasket. Put on. As soon as I put some some more goo on here, I gotta put it on both sides. You understand? Gotta put the goo on. Put the goo on me. Gotta put the goo on me. I'm thinking about doing a project just for fun. I'll show you. I'll show you. Oops. Line up them holes. There. Okay, I put some Alaskan Loctite on there, otherwise known as never seize, anti-seize. Alrighty, get in there. That would ya? These things go in at a funny angle. And I can. I got it, I think. They go in. Uh oh. What's going on there now? That one went. So why ain't this one going in? Hmm. Well, I don't know. None of them broke off coming out of there. I'm gonna get my old fat fingernail under there. See what's the gasket might be. Might be causing me a problem. It don't seem like it should be. This paint ain't real dry on here. I'm kind of speeding things up a little faster than I should. Let me look at one of these others. Same length. I don't know what's going on there. They don't know. Everything else looks good. I know they go in at a goofy angle. But I might have to get a Hunger screw. Come on, you can do it. Nope, that one ain't going in. Oh, I know what it is. I bet that one's shorter than that one on the bottom. Possibly. Maybe by just a little smidgen. Well, so much for my paint job. I'll have to retouch it up. I can do that. Come on, you. You in it? 
That's the problem. Yep, that looks a little better. Not paying attention. More better. There we go. Now, did you notice that this is white now? instead of the corroded blue. Because the theme is Johnny Rude. So that makes it just a smidgen more Johnny Rude. Okay, I wanted to point out a couple final things I did here. I put those little plugs there to plug those holes. And I had a washer there, and I found I didn't need it. I put one of those black plastic cups, and that was fine. So that's all sealed up. And we changed out the uh, little white discharge cover there to a Johnson. All right. Then what I did which I think is better. This was the cover to that horn button they had here. That, that's why there was two holes here. So I put the little plastic caps in those holes, then I used this and put a different rubber deal here, and then I put a couple screws and that'll hold it so now when I shift, it don't come out and so forth. And it looks good. I like that. I think it looks appropriate. Uh-oh, I did it again. I did it again. There. More better. So, there is the Johnny Rood. And that's almost a wrap. I just got to get some zip ties and do that which I will do, and then we'll start it up properly. Well, now, we all know what it means when I wear the hat. It means somebody came bearing the gifts. So, it's Christmas in August. Let's go look. Well, there she is. It's a little Johnny 3.3. Yes, sir. Fella said he's had it sitting in his garage for years and never used it. And, uh, I can see it's missing the tiller handle, but everything else seems to be there and it turns over and feels like it's got real good compression. He said he hasn't run it in several years, so we'll get it all cleaned up and I have several, many of those little tiller handles. And even if you didn't, it wouldn't be nothing that would be hard to fabricate out of many different sources because it's literally just a handle to steer with. It has nothing to do with the throttle or anything. I have an Evinrude version of this one that is identical other than the paint. So I'm looking forward to getting this one going. Yes, sir. It is Christmas in August. Well, you remember I said I got another project I was going to start tinkering around with. Well, there it is. Um, somebody put beside the dumpster that old retro repop bicycle there. And uh, I just like the way it looked 
with the red tires and all and then at another dumpster quite a while ago I got that old two-stroke snow thrower and I thought if I took that engine out of that snow thrower and strapped it to that bicycle that could be a fun little project it's nothing I'm gonna you know make a, a, a whole video about or anything I just thought as I play with it and as I come along with it I'll show you a little snippet but the old snow thrower it turns over and and so forth so it could be fun so I just thought I'd show you that no blower meets repop retro bike. Well, there it is in all its completeness the Johnny Rude 25. Um, it's done, it's ready to go on the four cell rack over there that's got a lot of holes in it so I've got it hooked up to my power pack and my gas tank and we'll give the old Johnny Rude a run Turn on some water. Oh! 
Now let's test out that recoil. And stop. I like that uh, shift grommet set up there I did. I think that's pretty pretty nice and that nice beefy shift handles nice and just a nice Johnny Rude ready to go ready to get to work So, we have one Johnny Rood completed. Um, it is a very nice running motor. This motor runs really well. Um, and its overall appearance is pretty good. Um, all the paint I used was off-the-shelf hardware paint. And it still because of the way the bonnet is and the lower unit is um, I could take that I think it was called midnight blue rust-oleum and put on there and it still has the flavor of a OMC product even though it's just rattle can white and rattle can rust-oleum midnight blue but if you look back at the videos I did when I started this the entire leg and cowling pan lower cowling pan was just flake just almost bare aluminum what what paint that was on there um, you could almost knock off with just a garden hose and I wire wheeled it uh, put some zinc etching primer on there and then a couple of good nice thick coats of regular rust-oleum automotive primer and I did that because there was some pitting on it and so forth and that um, automotive primer it it fills some of that pitting in real nice um, I use it on if it's bare aluminum I'll always try and put the zinc primer on there first um, I've had real good uh, results with that molar zinc uh, chromate etching primers what I think they call it um, and that tends to stick really good to the bare aluminum. And then you go over that with the automotive primer. And like I said, I, I always do at least two, and on this case, three or four coats of that to, to hide any pitting. Then when you come over with the Rust-Oleum top coat, um, it looks really good. It, uh, and then something I do sometimes, um, I didn't do it on this motor, but uh, I do it a lot on the white Johnson parts, um, is I'll put a coat or two of clear over that. And what it does is it seems to make cleanup a lot easier when, when, you, when I put them in my tank and it's full of yucky, oily water. If I have a couple coats of that clear on there, then I use the super clean or whatnot to clean the oil off of it and it just rinses right off. So it helps in that regard. This motor will not go back in my tank. It is done and uh, it is a very nice example of an old Johnny Rude made out of parts.
and uh, it will be a good work engine for somebody who wishes to take a little care of it. Did I say that? That was a slip. Um, but anyway, she should sell really good. So we are done with that one, and oh boy, um, I've got a log splitter I need to take care of. Um, and then I think I'm going to bring that little 5.0 Evan Rude in here and take care of that one for a customer and uh, see what we find with that. I can't even remember what he said the issues was, but I think he said hard starting and in order to stay running half choke. So you know what that means. Garbage radar. So that'll probably be my next one, but right now we're going to call this one Done Finis Caputa. So that is going to be a wrap on this one. And as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.